Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of our month of Azure Databricks. Today what we're going to do is look at using widgets inside Azure Databricks notebooks to create more configurable notebooks that you can use for multiple different tasks. Here we are back in Azure Databricks. Now what we're going to be showing you in this video is how you start using widgets. Now what a widget allows you to do is to pretty much give you a parameter driven notebook. So if you want to create a very generic notebook that you can give to a user and just allow them to make some simple changes and not have to necessarily worry about what the code is doing, widgets are a great option for that. There are a couple of different types of widgets that you can use. So you can either have a text widget and that will give you a text box at the top of your notebook that somebody can enter some text into and then the output of that text can be used to power some other part, some other logic inside your notebook. You can have a drop down you can have a combo box and you can have a multi-select. So let's have a quick look at some of these. So the first thing that you may want to have a look at is um, this little guy down here, dbutils.widgets.help. What help will do is show you all of the options that you have available to you for getting started with working with widgets. So running this shows me um, a little bit about the functions that we have and how I can use them and which parameters they accept. So I can see here that all right, that's what I need to do to use a combo box, to use a drop down, um, to use a multi select, and also to use text. Let's just clear the results. Okay, so here's an example of um, creating a widget that uses text. So if I run this one, what you will see is that's created this new input at the top here, which says hello world. Now this widget here is now known as text and what I've done is I've given it a default value. That's what these two parameters are, the name and the default value. And now that's enabled um, somebody to start working with that. I can then also add in um, a drop down. And so what I've done here is said this is a drop down. The default is um, going to be one and then to actually seed it with a range of values. Now I could have just passed through um, a list here and it could just iterate through the list and populate that or you could use some logic. So this logic here is basically saying um, in a range of 1 to 10 give me a load of values. So if we click on here what we've got is our, our, our list of, um, of, of 1 to 9 actually because it's um, upper bound. Then we can do a very similar thing here for a combo box. So here we have um, a combo box with A, B and C. See I've specified the values here and the default is A. And then also we can have a multi-select. So in this combo box we can just choose one of these options, A, B or C. On a drop down we have a slightly different style. The combo box and the drop down work in a very similar way. Multi-select gives you this ability to have multiple items. And in our text just gives us a free format way of writing and whatever we want. So if I scroll down a little bit, we can have a look at how we can actually receive those values. So if I run this cell here, what we're going to do is we're going to use this dbutils.widgets.git and I'm going to refer back to the widget. So we've got our text, our drop down, our combo box and our multi-select. And you can see down here, our hello world has come through um, from our text and our other values have come through. If I make a change here, now if I run that cell again, you'll see we just get yes and maybe. If I change the text, by hitting enter on there, that's refreshed that cell as well. We've got hello YouTube. Now with these values here, yes, um, comma, maybe, what we may want to do is actually iterate through a whole load of things here and do them one by one. So what we can do is we can just um, take the output of, of our multi-select and then we can split it on the comma and then we can just do a basic for loop through those. So this is just looping through and saying yes, maybe, or maybe yes, no, maybe. And then we run that one again and we get each one of those values. Now you can clean up widgets. So you can just do dbutils widgets.remove and that's going to remove one of those values. Or you could just do db widgets remove all and that will get rid of all of them. Now one of the good things about widgets is you can create a very generic notebook and then you can pass that off to something like Data Factory or to um, a scheduled job and then pretty much make that very parameter driven and have this generalized notebook that can do a whole load of different things. So we can come in here and hit schedule, 
create a new job. We'll say it's going to run every hour. And then what we can do here is we can have a set of parameters. So we can edit the parameters here and, and pass in a, a key value um, pair. So maybe what we want to do is add in a couple of key values. I'll do that now. And there I've provided a couple of basic, um, a couple of default values for these options. So hit confirm. And then what we can do is um, we want to tell this particular job to actually run against um, our standard um, cluster. So if I hit edit here and just change this so it's going to use our existing cluster and use our example cluster, hit confirm. And now if I hit run now, what we can do is we can have a look at the logs and we can see which values have just been output. So this has all of our previous values and then we can see in here we've got our yes, maybe no. If we go back to our jobs a little bit too soon, have a look at the log. You can see here that we've got hello YouTube 7, A, no and no, which are the values that have come through. If we head back and we change these again, so I'm just going to edit here, I'm going to change that one to um, comma maybe and change the value of the drop down to 4 and run now. Let's have a look at the logs. We've got hello YouTube, this time we've got a four, we've got an A, we have a no maybe, and we have those two lists separated. So thanks very much for watching. That's a super quick introduction to widgets for Azure Databricks. Um, if you're enjoying this series, then please don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube so that you never miss another one of our videos. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.